Good morning, everybody. I thought I'd share with you our Christmas book collection. This book collection is pretty um, simple. I, did, I have culled out at all the books that we didn't love and um, only kept things that we really would read and enjoy every year. Um, I also wanted to include two of my favorites, which are um, two collections of Miss Reed short stories. Um, the Christmas at Fair Acre one includes No Holly from Miss Quinn, which was my first introduction to Miss Reed, and I think remains one of my favorite short stories of hers. Um, sometimes you can find it in its own volume, um, but it's a really lovely story about a woman who is single and lives on her own and then goes to help her brother, who is a vicar, while his wife is in the hospital with their um, young children and how it really stretches her and um, it's originally hard for her to um, give up her plans for Christmas, but um, ultimately she realizes that helping other people is um, where she'll find the most joy and happiness. And so I, I really love that story. Another of her short stories, Miss Reed's short stories, A Country Christmas, includes another favorite of mine, which is called The Village Christmas. And that one is about um, two elderly ladies who live a very peaceful existence, um, and their peace is shattered when a family moves across the street from them, a wild um, family with multiple children and parents who sort of are very hippy-dippy, and they um, eventually, the two elderly ladies, help the family with children um, on Christmas Day and their lives are never the same. So those are two of my favorites. The favorites that I have that are, are for children um, are in this basket. Uh, the first is The 13 Days of Christmas by Jenny Overton and illustrated by Shirley Hughes. And it's um, a hilarious story of a uh, young man trying to win the hand of a girl in his town. Um, using the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, to help him woo her, and it's very sweet and cute. Another is A Child's Christmas in Wales by Dylan Thomas, and it's illustrated by Trina Sharp Hyman, who is one of my very favorite illustrators. Um, you may know this book as a Christmas special that I think was put out by the BBC, and it may be on Amazon for free currently. Um, I'm not positive. It's on my to watch list this season. Um, but the book is excellent. And this edition with uh, Trina's uh, illustrations is just exquisite. So you'll really enjoy that if you can find it. This is a book that um, my mother brought home from the library when we were young, and um, I loved it so much that when I started a family, I bought a used copy on Amazon. Um, and it's just a delightful story about a Christmas miracle that happens for a poor family of five children. And I think you'll really love it. These three books I purchased um, a long time ago when we only had two children, I think. Um, at Barnes and Noble um, for 50% off. I had heard of The Gift of the Magi and really enjoyed these illustrations by PJ Lynch. And when I saw that, I picked up this one, which is also um, in that collection and um, was a very sweet story about a little girl who um, discovers uh, the true meaning of Christmas, I would say. And this one was new to me, but purchased at the same time, The Christmas Miracle of Jonathan Toomey, and I think I read it in the store and loved the story so much that I bought it. It also comes with a CD that's read by James Earl Jones, which was a draw. But then I found out that it was made into a movie, which is sort of a Hallmark-esque movie um, that is a must-see for us during the Christmas season. And that is rather inexpensive on Amazon as well. I think it's only $4.99. Um, current movie, it's so beautiful. Letters from Mother Christmas by J.R.R. Tolkien. It's a classic with beautiful illustrations that, and uh, the handwriting of J.R.R. Tolkien, which makes it um, especially lovely. Um, I like all letters and diaries by um, 
different people, and there's this is no exception, though it's um, it's just very sweet. The Miracle of St. Nicholas, I love to read this one on St. Nicholas Day, but it's good for any time of year. It's about a family that lives in a Russian village during communist times um, and experiences a miracle. It's very beautiful. The illustrations are sort of iconographic, um, and it's just a really lovely story about a village coming together. This is my favorite book on St. Herman of Alaska, who's celebrated on December 13th. Um, I love the illustrations in this book, and the story is very um, lyrical and simple for little ones. Um, this book often finds itself on our nature table um, around St. Herman's multiple feast days. So um, that's a good one to look for. This Lucia, Saint of Light, is a wonderful story by Catherine Bogor Hyde. Beautiful illustrations. And uh, the story is about a family who celebrates St. Lucia Day and um, also tells the story, the, the hagiography of St. Lucia. So that's a really lovely book to have in your collection. I like this, Prepare of Bethlehem, The Feast of the Nativity. And um, aside from the amazing illustrations that include some old leaf, which is a really nice touch, I really enjoy the excerpts from Vespers and Matins and the Treparian. Um, from the church hymnology. I mean, I think that that's really a lovely addition to this book, and it's nice for children to be able to, to read through that with their parents so they're prepared for services. I really like Patricia Palacco, and these two stories, The Christmas Tapestry and An Orange for Frankie, are two of her best books. They're real tear jerkers. Um, they will make you cry, but um, the stories are beautiful and touching, and um, I think your children will enjoy them as well. I love Tasha Tudor's illustrations. This is her Night Before Christmas book. And I find, especially in this one, that I can really see um, the places that she, um, the, her, the rooms in her house and the, the place that she lived in these illustrations. She really, she took her inspiration from her actual life. And I like that um, about this book. And this one was uh, given to my parents um, a long time ago. From a cousin, it's a treasury of Christmas stories. Um, a lot of excerpts from Christmas books and things. Um, music that you can play um, on the piano and sing along with. And also, towards the end of the book, there's a section on how they celebrated Christmas at Tasha Tudor's home, including some of her receipts. Um, the illustrations are beautiful, and um, it's inspirational um, for me to when I'm decorating our home and, and thinking of different traditions that I want our family to have. This book was mine when I was a little girl, and it was Christmas, and I just love uh, the illustrations in this book, the, the colors, um, the British styling of Angelina's village and their homes. It's just, it's a really beautiful little book. Um, and one that I've enjoyed reading to my children and have enjoyed reading, rereading myself as an adult. This book was discarded at our library, unfortunately, um, but that was good for us because we got it for about 50 cents. Um, Christmas Tree for Pin is about a gruff um, father with a tiny little daughter. Um, the mother has died and her little girl wants to celebrate Christmas and decorate a tree. So that's a really sweet, touching book that I enjoy reading. The Year of the Perfect Christmas Tree and The Story of Holly and Ivy are two of my books that um, were illustrated by Barbara Cooney, who is one of our favorites. Um, a Chris, the Year of the Perfect Christmas Tree is a really touching story of a little girl who goes to um, choose a Christmas tree with her father. But then her father is taken um, to, or taken to Europe to fight in World War II, or World War I, I'm sorry. And so she and her mother are sort of left to uh, live the year without him, and um, 
they have to collect the Christmas tree that, that, that was chosen by the father and the little girl um, before Christmas. And so it's a beautiful little story about that and a Christmas miracle that happens. Um, the Story of Holly and Ivy is another Christmas miracle book by Rumor Godin, who I know a lot of people love. It's a really beautiful story. It's lengthy. It could probably be a chapter book um, for some older, you know, it's perfect for some older children. Um, but the, the illustrations are beautiful. Um, a very touching book, unfortunately, also was a discard, which means that it's not as appreciated as it should be. The last book that I wanted to share with you is How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which I'm sure everyone's familiar with. It's my favorite Dr. Seuss book, which is not saying much because I don't adore Dr. Seuss. Um, I just don't find his uh, illustrations or writing to be inspiring. However, this is a nice story of redemption, and um, we do enjoy reading it at least once during this Christmas season. and watching the old uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the, the television special. Those are Christmas books. I hope that you enjoyed seeing them. I would love to hear about yours. I know that our collection is very small, um, so I think that sometimes that won't appeal to some people. I mean, I think that um, I see some people have uh, 25 Christmas books and they wrap them all up and they open them, and I think that's really lovely. and. Um, maybe something that we could do one year um but really these are my very favorite books and i wouldn't want to necessarily add another book unless it was it fit the um description of a book that we really love so that is what we have and um i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you soon have a great day bye